team and welcome to the first video in a series on descriptive statistics. My name is Justin Zeltzer and over the next 12 or so videos, I'll be leading you through every descriptive measure you're ever likely to need. This first video is going to focus on the mean, but you'll find the rest of the series up on zstatistics.com. Now, even though these videos are aimed at beginners, I'd say even statistical veterans will learn something new in each of them as I approach things in an intuitive way and have tried to kind of go beyond the boring definitions of things. But let's not waste your time, let's get stuck straight into it, shall we? Now, the word mean comes from the French mayon from around the 1300s. And originally it was meant to mean the uh, middle of two musical notes. Now, when we're finding the mean from a population, we give it the symbol, the Greek symbol, mu. And to calculate the mean, we do the sum of all the observations. This Greek letter sigma here indicates we are to sum all of the x values. So, it's the sum of x over the total number of observations, n, which is fairly intuitive. Now, if you're taking the mean from a sample, nothing much happens to that formula, uh, except that we use a lowercase n to represent the number of observations instead of that uppercase n for the population. But we're not going to get too bogged down into populations versus samples in this little video. But if your curiosity gets the better of you, I'll put up a little link here for a video I did on this exact topic. So let's have a look at the mean in action. If you're trying to find the mean of the following sample, 10, 28, 28, 33, and 54, it's as simple as adding them up and dividing by five because of course there are five observations. Now this is very straightforward and I imagine most of you would have no problem in carrying out that sum. Turns out it's 30.6. So we'd say that the mean of this sample here is 30.6. Now, as a bit of a convention, you often provide the mean to one more decimal place than the original data set was given in. So here, because the original data set was given to no decimal places, I'm providing the mean to one decimal place. Again, that's just a convention, but it seems to be followed by most textbooks and journals and statistical thinkers alike. So, good to start getting into some nice statistical habits here, hey? But it's as simple as that. Now, for the advanced section of this video, I've got three little extra pieces we're going to have a look at. Firstly, I'll try my hand at calculating a weighted mean. I'll then look at a special case where we try to find the mean of a categorical variable. And finally, I'll offer you a challenge question, which I'll ask you to answer for me in the comments of this video, or at least you can big up anyone that's uh, got in there before you with the correct answer. So to introduce this, let's take another look at the sample we just used. So there's our 10, 28, 28, 33 and 54. Another way of describing this data set is to put it into a table form like this, where I've got x in one column. These are all our values of our variable x. That's 10, 28, 33, and 54. And then I provide f of x, or in this case, we can say the frequency of x in this second column. So that's one, two, one, and one. And notice that, of course, the sum of all these frequencies is going to equal five, the number of observations. So the reason why I'm showing you both of these side by side is to get across the idea that the weighted mean is so intuitive and you almost don't need a formula for it. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know how reticent I am to just provide a formula and say, just use that. That's not really my way. I like to make things uh, intuitive. So let me have a go at doing this. In the initial example, what we did was we summed up all the observations and divided by five. But of course, you can probably recognize that two of these values are 28. So without even worrying about what a weighted mean is, we could have known to just, well, let's times 28 by two and then add it to all the other numbers. It doesn't really change anything, does it? But in writing it like that, you can see that we've effectively on the numerator here weighted each of the observations by the frequency that they occur. 
So 10 is multiplied by 1 because there's only one 10. 28 is multiplied by 2. 33 is multiplied by 1, etc. And then we divide by the total number of observations. Or alternatively, you can consider that the total number of weights. So in other words, if you were to see a formula that looks like this, yeah, that looks pretty ugly, but it should be quite intuitive, right? You're multiplying all the values of x by their frequencies and summing them up and then dividing by the sum of all the frequencies. So it's quite literally what we are doing in this formula above here. I guess I wanted to show it to you this way because I wanted you to appreciate that a weighted mean is actually nothing special. At the end of the day, a regular mean is just a weighted mean where all the weights are one, right? So a weighted mean's really no different, just as a fancy formula. Now, as promised, let's have a look and see if we can find the mean of a categorical data set. So here we have one that I've created, which is just uh, male or female. Let's just say this is a litter of dogs. And we want to find the mean sex of the dogs. Is that even a question you can ask? Doesn't sound right, does it? But is it possible to find the mean of this data set? Well, not as written, but say we define all the females as ones and all the males as zeros. We now have a numerical data set for which we can find the mean. So again, that's quite straightforward. I just add up all of those values and divide by six in this case. It looks like there are four females and two males. So this calculation becomes four on six or 0 0.6666666. Now, what do you think that represents? Well, in this case, because it's a binary variable, that's a categorical variable with just two options, the mean is actually the proportion of the category that we defined as one. So this represents the proportion of females in this litter of dogs, if you'd like. So a mean of a binary variable actually gives you the proportion. Now, I wouldn't get too much cuter than that. Uh, I wouldn't try to apply a, a mean to a categorical variable with more than two values. It certainly wouldn't make sense in that case. But in the uh, binary case, it certainly does. Okay, so are you ready for your challenge question? Here we go. Calculate Georgia's weighted average mark that she's got from her statistics degree thus far. She's done four subjects and here are her marks. And these are the credit points that the uh, subjects are each worth. So if you're going to try to calculate her weighted average mark, you're obviously going to have to incorporate that information. Once you've done that, feel free to post up your answer in the comments or at least big up someone else that's got in there before you and got the correct answer. And if you like these videos, feel free to check out the rest of them on zstatistics.com or click through to the recommended video, which will hopefully be the median or a cheeky additional video I've done on the mean looking at geometric and harmonic means. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. See you around.